Is there a clicker? Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Abdullah. I'm a deputy chairman of the board uh, for Al Malik Mining and Metallurgical Complex. Uh, Al Malik is uh, the second largest company in Uzbekistan. Um, I think you heard about Uzbekistan, about the mineral resources that we have. Uh, Uzbekistan has always been highly regulated by the government. We're not publicly availing a lot of information. But uh, going forward, this uh, policy has been changed. We are going more public. We're making the announcement to what are the resources or reserves or deposits that we have today. Uh, and then uh, eventually we want to attract more investors and then more players in the market. Uh, just a quick glance um, at the company. The uh, company has been operating more than 70 years, uh, more than 30, 35,000 of employee, uh, 3 billion of uh, US dollars of revenue. Um, EBITDA is 1.5 billion US dollar. And our main product is uh, copper. As you know, uh, copper is becoming very popular these days. It's because of our uh, uh, genius and stubborn friend, Elon Musk, who made uh, a proof that uh, uh, electric cars is a profitable business, and now everybody has to turn their face to the electric, electric cars, and electric cars use five times more uh, the copper. And uh, that's why the price for copper has been also going very high up, because renewable energy also uses five times more than a conservative uh, energy sector. Um, and so the scarcity of uh, copper is also making it difficult uh, to, 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 to find it. Uh, there are not so many uh, mines where you can uh, get the copper, and then it, which should also make you, uh, which also make you give a good profit. We, uh, our mine is mainly copper oriented, but then we have a byproduct which is gold. Uh, we are also producing 17 tons of gold. Uh, it's not a small amount, uh, if you know gold market. Um, and uh, this also makes our uh, extraction activities much cheaper. Um, then uh, we are also producing zinc, 110,000 uh, of ton, and silver, and molybdenum, tungsten, and many other metals. Uh, we're working with rare metals. It's also coming to, uh, from this uh, copper mine. What you can see here is uh, the Jork-based uh, resources that we have available today. Uh, we have done together with SRK Consulting. Um, you can see uh, that uh, we have uh, 45 million tons of uh, copper uh, in uh, Kalmakir and then uh, in uh, Yoshlik mine. They're together, they're open pit mine. Uh, actually, uh, this, is, uh, this is enough with current capacity of production. It's enough for the next 350 years. But when we go to the uh, next level, we'll be producing 400,000 uh, tons of copper in 2028. It will be again enough for 110 years. So life mine is very, very long. And you can also see the gold. It's a 5,300 tons of gold in open pit mine. This is actually the number one in the world uh, as, a, as an open pit mine. Uh, then we are also taking this as a sixth place when it comes to copper resources. Uh, here we are today, like 14 million tons of ore being processed today. Uh, in 2028, uh, we are adding up two more new processing plants. We are currently running with a mega project with 11 billion US dollars. This is a, a humongous project. Uh, we are uh, building two new processing plants. Each copper processing plant will be processing uh, 60 million tons of uh, ore per year. So it will be the largest uh, uh, in the world. Here or you can see some of the steps uh, or the status is what we have been doing. Uh, this project is already ongoing. Uh, around uh, 2 billion US dollars has been already invested to the project. Uh, we have been running this project with many companies like German companies, Finnish companies, and some US companies has also been participating from Australia. So there, there is a massive number of companies being participated in the, in the journey. Um, you, here you can see the forecast uh, today, 148,000 tons of copper, and uh, in 2025 it will be 290,000, uh, and then 400 eventually in 2028. ESG is also on, uh, on, the, on the agenda. It's, it's, it has a high priority. Uh, the, the emission of pollution, uh, it's 25%. Uh, now we're in 2025, it's going to 0.5. We have been heavily working on the ESG. Um, so basically, the, around 8% um, of the net profit being invested or spent on ESG. It's including environment and social and governance. Uh, so you can see some uh, interesting numbers that we are doing a lot of uh, operational um, uh, process improvements where we are to reduce uh, the, the gas emission, electricity savings, and natural gas savings. Uh, all of these are happening. And we're also investing quite heavily into the society uh, in the city. 
And transformation is uh, the key. Um, actually, uh, until 2017, we have been, uh, as I said, a very um, closed uh, country. Uh, the new president came and we have been running through a uh, huge reform in Uzbekistan. Um, basically, uh, we, st we started opening up the door and we made uh, some information publicly available. We started attracting the companies. Uh, then all the companies in Uzbekistan has been uh, running through transformation phase. It's uh, like process optimization, it's uh, attracting the investors, it's expanding the production. Everything was uh, running in parallel. Uh, we have uh, recently established copper cluster zone, I'll talk about later. And then a uh, long-term strategy has been developed together with uh, Canadian company Hatch for 2030. Then uh, all the reporting are based on the international standards, IFRS reporting is happening, and then ESG report is also published for the last two years. Uh, and then we also got the uh, feature ratings. Uh, we are right now BB minus, uh, and then uh, standard poor's it's uh, B plus, but uh, uh, we are right now working to bring it to B minus. Uh, digitalization is key everywhere. I will not stop too much on that, but digitalization is key right now in Uzbekistan in every sector. I think it's happening all over the world. So I live myself in Denmark 15 years. I was an IT guru there, working all the time with IT, and we were doing a lot of uh, projects there. So same happening in Uzbekistan. Uh, a lot of optimization is happening because of uh, the new IT technology and then uh, digital mind that we want to fully automate the dispatching activities today. It's uh, manually done. Uh, ma uh, manufacturing execution system is also being implemented. It's a that the latest version of, for example, Aveva, we're looking into, and then, then SAP system will, uh, is also being implemented. Today we are using local uh, ERP system. So there will be quite massive change also in the process, so it will be very transparent for any investor who is willing to come and join the journey. Uh, and when it comes to investments, yeah, uh, copper cluster is kind of very critical for Uzbekistan. We are changing the... Uh, uh, the, we don't want to be regarded anymore that Uzbekistan is providing raw materials. Yeah. We stopped this idea. We will not do it anymore. We are more oriented towards uh, uh, producing value-added products. So we want to do deprocessing of copper and other materials or metals that's being produced in Uzbekistan. Uh, so that's why a uh, copper cluster has been established. As you can see, uh, there are a number of different uh, products uh, to be produced. Uh, we are promoting joint ventures as well as a, as a company, AMMC. Uh, there are two reasons. Uh, it's a diversification uh, of, the, of the risk. If any uh, into foreigner investment is willing to come and then they see some kind of risk, then uh, we don't mind participating uh, or creating a joint venture together. We can build the facility and then they can bring the technology so we can produce more valued products. Uh, or if the private investor is willing to invest on their own, they're also welcome. Its market is open, uh, the information is available, there are very uh, interesting things see, that you can see. The copper cluster zone, what kind of benefits you can get. Uh, the property tax will not be paid or it's, uh, it's exempt. Then land tax is exempt. Then um, another very important part is I think the copper. You can buy it, it's guaranteed as a cathode it will bring. And the price is LME minus 2%. Today we are selling copper cathodes, LME plus. We never sell minus. The global traders are coming and uh, purchasing from us. Just because of the quality, they are willing to pay higher. And then uh, transportation cost is covered by them. We don't pay any transportation cost. And if you ask demand today, we don't have any issue. Actually, we are not even looking for customer. We don't do that. Normally, customers are coming in November and December. They come with their bids. And then it's decided by the end of the year for next full year. So when, if you're coming in March and then uh, April, we say, sorry, guys, we cannot take you because it's fully booked. So we are not uh, suffering from any kind of demand. There is a huge demand for the product, uh, and then a big, big uh, companies like you know Trafigur, uh, Glencore, all the big players are also always participating. Um, and so another thing is, he said, we want to localize it. We want to do deprocessing of copper, and we want to produce more value-added product. So that's why I say it's a huge advantage on processed copper price discount LME minus two percent. If I'm selling today LME plus ten US dollars or fifteen US dollars. Actually, there were some companies approaching me and asking me, I said, this is the price we have, and they, they said, oh, how come you have a higher price? It's because of uh, it's uh, 3.9 and then 98, you know? That's why it's too high quality, and normally they are purchasing our copper, bringing it to Turkey, then they're also purchasing copper from Africa, then they combine together to increase the volume, because obviously the, the, the quality is a bit lower, and then that's the activity the big uh, companies are doing. 
So that's a huge advantage. Um, and then you can also see the savings you could do from electricity, water, it's a uh, government guarantees, all the infrastructure is set, uh, you can get, you get uh, natural gas, and then uh, people or population are well around, so you can easily employ people. Uh, you don't need to send to a deserted area where they'll have to travel one day, like you know, in Chile it's happening, this kind of activity. Yeah. And uh, another important thing is rare and non-ferrous material. Um, this is also we're working because we're in polymetal um, industry. Uh, we are uh, right now working with uh, the Dresden Technical University. In Dresden, you know, they're producing a lot of chip. Every second chip in Europe is produced in Dresden. I don't know if you're aware or not, but that's what it is. And uh, they're also looking into um, cooperation where, we, where they can get the, the, the very pure material they could use for semiconductors. That's also what we have been right now working on. Uh, today we are producing, it's a 99.97, 98, but we want to make five nines. Uh, so then it will be way more expensive. And then we, uh, actually there was a, a geopolitical analysis that's been done. Uh, today, many of the semiconductor materials are coming from China, but the shift is being expected because of tension between US and China. So there are like many companies, they want to diversify the, the, the market or sources. So the Central Asia is already regarded as a next, uh, next uh, source. Uh, but uh, AMMC is ready to, to operate in this regard as well. Then I also want to talk about, uh, in general, in Uzbekistan, what's happening. Uh, I told you that uh, we are making a lot of information available for the market. We want to work with uh, international investors uh, or, or companies who are willing to come and uh, take part in the journey. Uh, you can see from February 2023, it's a, it's a big change uh, in the mining sector. From 2023, February, which means in two months' time, then international standards will be applied all in all mining sector. So the, uh, we will be introducing JORC. Before that, we were using our own uh, standards. Uh, so it will, be ch uh, it will be a shift. And then we will be also supporting junior, uh, junior companies. And the property and the proper guarantee and transmission, the transition of subsoil or subsoil use rights will also be uh, delivered. And then we have also a new licensing policy. Uh, to, we are using implementation of block system. Uh, it's a first come, first serve. It's not that uh, we will be lobbying one company to another, but it's again, first come, first serve. Uh, you will get the license. And uh, all the allotments will be based on auction. It will be very transparent. We have already a platform for that, so any company can come and participate. Uh, then, of course, there is an obligation on social and environment. I think this is very clear, especially ESG is on the, on the agenda for any mining company. So we are also uh, putting a high, high focus on that. But we will, we will make it very like, a transparent, what we are expecting from you in terms of uh, effect on the environment or health and safety. Here, you can also see big change. Its royalty price went down uh, just to support uh, new companies who are coming to Uzbekistan or new investors. So like for gold, uh, silver, and copper, uh, it went from 15% to 7%. For uranium, it's uh, from 10% to 8%. And the tungsten, so basically you can see it's from even 10% to 2.7%. And then auction, as you can see, already started. We are already running some of the auctions. In December, we have following auctions. Uh, if your companies are interested to participate or to, if you want to find out, uh, we can put it together with, uh, we have a geological committee who is running the policy around mining. And then you can get all the information about the objects around gold we have, and then tungsten, and then hydrocarbons, and other like, rare materials. So there are many objects, uh, obviously here, uh, 24 different objects that you could also participate in the auction process. And then there's another big one, it's a Miskon uh mine, or this open mine, and then uh, we have also uh, Mangit and Araband, another open mine. And you can see uh, the uh, reserves that's available in those, uh, uh, in those uh, open pit mines. You could also participate in, uh, in March. Uh, it has been already announced, so there are many companies already interested and they're coming and applying. It could also be that uh, interesting for you also to participate and see uh, the, the options. You can see copper is uh, 15 million tons. Uh, it's a quite big number. And for gold is 62 and then silver uh, six, uh, 600. And rare materials in the other ones. Here you can uh, get some of the information. Uh, for that part, it's not uh, fully uh, updated. It's, it will be delivered more in details for uh, Miskon and Yoshlik. Uh, I, I announced earlier that it's 15 million tons of copper. Uh, but uh, this will be also delivered by a uh, geological committee. If you just contact us and then we'll give all the details uh, and then they'll also provide the details. Uh, you are more than welcome to come and learn Uzbekistan. 
Uh, the advantage of Uzbekistan when it comes to open pit mine, uh, it's always around, I mean, it, the populated area is not far away. So from uh, employee or uh, employing the people, it's very easy. So you can uh, start doing the activity right away. And then you also, um, exploration activities, by the way, it's tax exempt for uh, s specific equipment. Uh, you don't need to pay uh, input VAT or VAT when you're, or when you're importing it. Uh, the sum of the taxes are completely exempt, so you can work way cheaper than you would do in other countries where you have to follow the like you know taxation. Um, and then, uh, as I said, uh, tender proposals uh, can be done already by March, by March uh, 2023. Um, and if we have also given us a timeline, what's what's expected in June 2023? The estimation was done; it was carried out, and scoping study and financial modeling in December uh, 2023, and then. Um, uh, in January, uh, actually it's uh, 2022, and then uh, PFS should be ready in 2023, January. So that's uh, basically it's about Uzbekistan. Um, you know, what I would say shortly is, you know, now you can go to any country, um, so you can try to invest your money in any country. But here, the advantage is we just start opening the markets. Uh, this activity was done in Kazakhstan like in 95, 98, in ni end of the 90s. That we have not been doing. We have been like uh, hiding the information because government wanted to completely regulate these numbers, uh, but now government just opening up. So I think this is the right time to go into the markets. It's like, you know, first mover advantage you will definitely have. And then uh, since it's a pro on the priority list from the government perspective, government is heavily monitoring and supporting. Uh, the committees are always next to you. They are trying to help or attracting other companies or even local companies who will be also assisting you or supporting you. You shouldn't expect in five years. I don't think this will happen. Yeah? This luxury will not be uh, available because there will be more and more players are coming and they know already the market and they will not have this kind of uh, uh, lux, uh, luxury support. So I think, you know, I believe it's the right time uh, to go to Uzbekistan and then to find out what we have. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Uzbekistan has a belt of uh, the, the mineral resources more than like a 200 kilometers, only in the area where we're working today. Uh, so when you come start investigating, you'll find more and more and more resources. And Central Asia has been always uh, known for uh, natural resources uh, and mineral resources. So I, uh, I requested to come over and then observe and uh, try to experience what we have. And by the way, electricity price is very low. And you, I think you also noticed in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, it's very expensive these days. But in Uzbekistan, uh, for example, we have a negotiation with uh, Mazdar. They're building a solar panels, a solar plant for two gigawatt, and they'll be selling for zero point, uh, two cents, two euro cent. So it's quite cheap. Then when you are buying from the government, uh, you, are, you are paying around from four to seven cents. So it's uh, quite cheap. And then uh, we're also promoting the solar plants. Uh, if you are uh, building a solar plant, or if you're interested, you can are also welcome, because government is also giving a lot of tax exemption. Uh, I can tell only for my country or my company, in 2028, we'll be consuming two gigawatts of uh, uh, electricity. And we are already running a tender for 260 uh, megawatts uh, solar uh, plants. And then uh, we will be expanding. We were uh, planning to increase up to one gigawatt of uh, solar plants. It's only in my company, so I'm not telling other companies. We have also m like uh, mega companies like Navoi uh, focused on gold and uranium. I think, you know, uh, Uzbekistan is also uh, known for Uranium production, we have in our Iran. So there are lots of opportunities. I, I request you to come over, and then we are available. And here is my contact. I can put you in contact, uh, whoever you want, any other companies, if you're interested. I can, I can, I'll be gladly helping you. And uh, I think then you'll have more information and you'll find more interest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Excellent presentation.